Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm standing by the little Matlock River in the Leicestershire village of Newton Linford. This is the churchyard of All Saints Church. We've come here today though to explore Bradgate Park. Bradgate Park is famous because it's where Lady Jane Grey lived. Um, we'll get more into the history and who lived there once we get into the park. But firstly, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the church and the churchyard and Newton Linford. Um, fortunately we can't go in the church, I've already checked. It is locked so um, we're only going to see the church from the outside. It's a really lovely looking church. If we come through here, go through the Lich Gate, be in the village centre. So I'll just quickly show you um, the village centre. So you've got, appears to be a tea room and old post office, a pub, another tea room. I believe there's another tea room in the park so no shortage of places to get a cup of tea here. And then this is the church again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk round the back of the church. Um, I'll go back over the Little Matlock River. Interesting name for a river. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's no connection with Matlock in Derbyshire. But if there is and anyone knows, um, you know, please do comment and tell me. Or one other thing I just want to show you here. If we go across, walking around the gravestones, there's the Leicestershire um, police box. So I thought that's not quite the same as the Doctor Who TARDIS, but it's quite cool. And from here we get a rather nice view of the church. So I'm going to go out that little gate just over there. And um, that's where we'll go into the park. And then we're going we're to climb up the hill towards um, what's known as Old John Tower. But I'll tell you more about that when we get there. So through here, through this little gateway. Looks like it's quite a popular park. There's a um, car park here, quite well filled. I'm sure if I'd come here in the middle of the summer, it'd be very busy. So that's why I've chosen this autumn day. It's a bit quieter to show you around. So here we are. It says, welcome to Bradgate Park. It's a historic deer park. It's been a deer park here, I believe, since the 13th century. And um, yeah, earlier home of Lady Day, Jane Grey. Nine days Queen of England. But we'll talk more about that once we get further on. So this is the little matlock. This is the car park. I'm going to head across the car park and up over there into the park. So we're across the car park and now we're about to enter the deer park. That is the reason why they have these rather tall gates and it's to stop the deer jumping out and going into the local countryside around. So we've gone through one gate, now we go through the second gate and on passing through the second gate we are now officially in the deer park so uh, whether we're going to see any deer today I can't promise that at this stage in the video we'll certainly look out for them um, so it's a bit of a let's walk up the hill see what we see kind of thing so the walk I'm going to do I'm going to follow up the hill this way the ruins of Bradgate House are over that way but I'm going to finish off there so on up we go and uh, let's go and find a deer and explore the park. I've gained a bit of height now in Bradgate Park. I can just see in the distance over there, city of Leicester. I appreciate the camera probably isn't picking that out. That plantation of trees up there, that's known as Tyburn now. When we go in through the bracken up here, it opens out and you can see ahead there is a war memorial. So we're going to aim for that war memorial there on the top of the hill and then the tower that we're also looking for will be further on that way. Still no sign of any deer yet but you know it's um, fairly, haven't been in here that long so I'm sure we've got a long time to find this. So I'm going to carry on until I get to the top of the warmer one. Well, I've got that accomplished feeling like I've just climbed a mountain but really, I'm only about um, 600 feet or so above sea level. That's where we've just come, up, up there. Um, I came down behind those rocks to get out of the wind, so as you can see, it's going to get windy now. Um, it's not going to be around, so I'm just going to shout. We've come up there. The ruins of Bradgate House are just down there. And I can see the skyline of Leicester behind me now. I'm just going to scramble over these rocks. And that's the wall. So I hope you can hear me, um, I'm shouting as loud as I possibly can, 
Um, we're going to head up to the War Memorial. It was for the um, Leicestershire Yeomanry, I believe, the people who fought in the First World War of the Leicestershire Yeomanry Regiment. So we're just going to walk on up there and then we should soon be able to see the tower, but we'll carry on um, along the ridge of this hill. So about 500, 600 feet above sea level. So, you know, not massively high, but if you look at the surrounding area, um, then I can't see any other hills that look to be of similar height. Once I've finished up there, I'm going to walk right round the edge of the park. And then, as I said, we're going to finish down at the ruins of the house. But let's now go and have a look at the war memorial. And the wind seems to have died down, so that's better. Oh, and what you see out there, all of that is Charmwood Forest. me a bit, although it's a different memorial for a different war, but Coombe Hill in Buckinghamshire. Have a look at the link on screen now, it just reminds me a bit of that. There we go. I'll let you have a look at the plaque. So this big concrete war memorial. As for this tower, I um, haven't been here before so I'm not exactly sure where probably somewhere here. I assume it's through a tree, so I'm going to carry on walking that direction. Let's go and find Old John Tower. We're getting some great views over Leicester over there now. I'm just, the reason I'm talking quietly is because I can see some deer, but I don't want to alarm them. So um, that's why I'm talking quietly. Have a look. You can see Munching away at the grass. I'm not going to go any closer, you know, because it's not really fair on the deer to um, kind of go too close. But there they go. I can just see another one over there. Just there. There we go. He's looking very still. Um, just I'm obviously aware I'm here. Like I said, I'm, I don't want to go too close and alarm them. Um, if I get any pictures, I I'll put them in to the video. Of them all stopping, stopping and looking at me. That this one there, oh, those two are running. This one appears to be, yeah, he's off now as well. So, there we are. We've seen the deer, some of very few of the deer they have here. Quite often, I'm not sure if it's the case here, but often with a deer park, for every hundred acres, a deer basically gets an acre's worth of land. Oh, now this is interesting. Um, coming out here. I can just see the top of this old John Tower I've been on about, but what's this? There's the another ruin. Maybe this is like, um, sometimes in deer parks you get like a deer shelter for them to come into, or maybe it was a hunting lodge and people hunted from in here. I'm not sure. So if anyone knows, please comment and tell me. And I can just see the deer over there. I'm going to now go on up to the tower, the old John Tower. And once again, we get a great view over Leicester. I'm really enjoying these views over Bradgate Park and Leicestershire from what is now the highest point in the park. That's a little woodland where we saw the deer. Now, as we come to here, we finally reach Old John Tower. Now, this tower was built in 1786 by one of the earls to um, commemorate a rather sad thing that happened here. As this is the highest point in the park, there used to be a windmill. It's, um, it's not quite as windy as it was over there, but you know, ideal place for a windmill. And um, there was a miller, the old John is the miller. Now, one of the earls was having a party for his son's 21st birthday up here on the hill, and there was a flagpole, and they built a fire around the flagpole. But the fire burnt through the flagpole, and the flagpole collapsed like that. All of the guests got out of the way, except old John the miller. He was killed sadly um, so they built this tower to remember him by so um, a bit of a sad reason for it to be but it's um, a very impressive tower it had been used by hunting parties for refreshments another thing I want to show you um, I appreciate you can't really see what it says but that plaque that basically talks about um, someone called Charles Benyon he gave the park 
to Leicester City and Leicester County uh, to be used for recreation in 1928 on condition that the wildlife you know, was maintained and wildlife was allowed to thrive here and from the deer we've seen it very much does. I'm going to now continue in that direction and eventually walk right the way down there. I can't see them anymore, but down to the ruins of Bradgate Park. In that direction, as I've already mentioned, you can see Charmwood Forest. I can just see, the camera's probably not big now, but I can just see the chimney of Ratcliffe Power Station. So you get quite um, wide bearing views. Oh, and somewhere down there is the Great Central Railway, um, but this isn't a train video today. So I'm going to carry on now, leave the tower behind me and um, continue on into the park. I've come down the hill from Old John Tower. Now when I was up there I pointed out the view over the area known as Charmwood Forest. Now, I'm going to correct myself, what I pointed to was actually Swiveland Woodland. Charmwood Forest was, or is, the wider area. It was once a large forest, um, but now there's very few trees left from that forest, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, but the area is known as Charmwood Forest. Um, and I know this isn't a railway video, but at the Great Central Railway at Rofley Station, there is a model railway called the Charmwood Forest Model Railway. You can the screen now. So, um, Lady Jane Grey was born here, as I mentioned earlier. She was born here at Bradgate in 1537. Quite well known for her um, nine day stint as Queen of England when she was only 16. And then she was beheaded sadly. So as for her being beheaded, obviously a lot of people were quite upset. And that brings us back on to Charmwood Forest. Some people, what they did, they pollarded the oak trees um, out of sadness for her passing. And so those trees were pollarded and some of those trees survive today. So here we are. Here we have some of the very ancient oak trees um, from Charm Forest and what another thing that's quite fairly well known is that some of them are so old and hollow inside you can actually walk through them so we're going to do that with this one so this is you can see how big the trunk would have been so it would obviously have been a much younger tree at the time but they would have pollarded it and then these are what's grown out so quite sad how the tree ended up becoming to this but when you think I'm standing in the middle of a tree that was here on it during those nine days when Lady Jane Grey was Queen of England. Not many trees, not the only tree, but I should think very few trees, you know, have um, lived through such such a long period, such history. I mean, think about it. Well, put it this way, I'm walking in the footsteps of Lady Jane Grey. She would have walked around the park. She's probably, you know, she's seen these trees that I'm showing you now. So I just find that really quite fascinating. Um, here we have some others. Let's look, you can go in that. It's amazing to think with my, with my rucksack. I can actually fit inside a tree. That's quite strange. There's some really big ones. Don't know if I can go in that one there. But this is, so this is what Charmwood Forest is. It's not the woodland I pointed out. That's Swiveland Woodlands. As I already mentioned, this is the real Charmwood Forest, or what's left of it. And um, I just find it very fascinating, very peaceful. Probably the deer hang around in here. I have seen a few more in the distance. Um, there we are, another very ancient oak tree. I mean, oak trees do live very, very long lifespans. If you divide an oak tree's lifespan into thirds, probably the first um, third of the life they grow, the second third of life they're the, the mature tree, and the final third of their life they're gradually dying. But, you know, they live on. I mean, look at that, that's ridiculous in a good way. Look at that, you can actually almost stand right inside it, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, so that's very, very fascinating. I wasn't quite sure what to expect. When I said you can go in the oak trees, I was thinking, right, okay, what's, what's that going to be like? But the, I, I really think this is great. Um, show you one or two more. Uh, one here, this one down here reminds me a bit of Robin Hood's Major Oak in Sherwood Forest. That's another thing we should do one day. Not today, though, different different era. We'll go to a different part of the country. We'll go to Sherwood Forest one day, but the Major Oak, Robin Hood's Major Oak, looks a bit like this. It's all quite propped up. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue on down the hill where there's supposed to be a reservoir, and then we're going to carry on, and we're going to finally finish by um, exploring the ruins of Bradgate House. Come down 
down to the bottom of the hill and here seems to be the best place to see the deer. We've got the whole deer sanctuary so there's various different species of deer which probably aren't allowed in there so they can um, graze there peacefully and people like us can just look at them from a distance. It's not far now until we get to the ruins of Bradgate House which are just the other side of the wall over there so let's go and find the ruins of Bradgate House. So just a little bit further along from where we saw the deer sanctuary, here is the ruins of Bradgate House where Lady Jane Grey was born. You can see one of the towers just there, there's the restored chapel. We're going to go and have a look. Unfortunately we can't go in which I'm a bit disappointed and I'm sorry I've kind of built the video up for us to go and have a look around the ruins and then they're locked. I'm not sure when they're open so if anyone knows, um, you know, are they only open at weekends or are they ever open or are they only open on bank holidays or once a year or something, please let me know because I would like to come and have a look around. So perhaps one day we'll do Bradgate Park Revisited or Bradgate House. So today I'm just going to show you what I can see from over the wall. So very impressive looking ruin. As I said, this is where Lady Jane Grey was built. So it says it's an ancient monument, no unauthorised entry. So, um, you know, some people probably climb over the fence. I'm not going to do that for so I can't go in. It means I can't go in, but I really would like to go in. You can see the Tudor brickwork. So some people, when it comes to Tudor houses, some people think, you know, all Tudor houses brick to the houses. It's getting a bit windy so I will shout so you can hear me. Um, we'll walk around here and we'll to see a bit more of the exterior. We can try and imagine what the house would look like. So there's been another big tower here. Now, if you have a look at this tower, you can see it's been altered and messed about with. Interestingly how there's a, a window there. Maybe it was built like that so that sort of light straight in. And above it you can see remains of where it's probably a big window across there. Um, all the ruins are very flat topped as you can see by this wall so someone's obviously possibly Victorians they've sort of made it look neater rather than the sort of rugged appearance you get um, and here's another one of the towers and um, this is the view that it had out over Bradgate Park you can see well the camera's picking out but there's some more deer I'm just going to walk down here interestingly over there there's some cedar of Lebanon trees now of course they wouldn't have been here in Lady Jane's Grey's time, their 19th century editions are supposed to make the park a bit more, you know, interesting, different. Um, so, there's the house, Bradgate House behind us, and I can just see up on top of the hill, the, wherever the camera's picking it out, the War Memorial. I'm going to continue on up the valley of the Little Matlock, the river we saw at the beginning, and um, just see what else we can see before we conclude our visit to Bradgate Park. This is one of the Cedar of Lebanon trees introduced in the 19th century. As I said back there, they um, started to plant them. And they certainly wouldn't have been here at the time of Lady Jane Grey. So that's the, um, the newer addition. And here's the more traditional oak trees. And there we have oak trees and Cedar of Lebanon side by side. So we come along here, we're back on the banks of the Little Matlock River, the river we saw by the church at the very beginning. Quite an attractive section of park here, pretty different to up on the hill down here in the valleys, very nice and peaceful. We're here so it appears to be what must be an ornamental lake um, and another cedar of Lebanon. So um, that pretty much concludes a visit to Bradgate Park. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. You know, if you're out this way, do come and visit Bradgate Park and um, enjoy the walk just as I did. So, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.